Hi, this is Coach Pete Carroll of the Seattle Seahawks, and with the leadership of our defensive passing game coordinator, Rocky Seto, we put together a film to present our style of tackling techniques. It's a system that we've been teaching and utilizing for the last four years at the Seahawks and since our days at USC. To break it down, our tackling system features shoulder tackling and a renewed emphasis to take the head out of tackling. We've found our style to be successful in the NFL and college, and we believe it could be employed on all levels. We are passionate about teaching this style of tackling because we desire to keep the standards of the game high and make the game as safe as possible. To explain further, we are a shoulder leverage tackling team. We have found that we can practice and drill our tackling without pads or a helmet. We can train and develop our safe tackling system in shorts and t-shirts, and it's a system that we believe will work on all levels and during all phases of the year, in season, off season, and spring football. How we teach this system of tackling was recently inspired by those who play rugby around the world. Rugby players have taken the head out of the game and truly exemplified shoulder tackling. You'll see several clips of rugby tackling throughout the film. We've broken this instructional video down into six segments. Hawk tackle, hawk roll tackle, profile tackle, strike zone, tracking, and compression tackle. We'll go into each teaching point more in depth later. The basis of our passion in this video is to maintain the physical integrity of the game while developing safer tackling techniques. We desire to play the game as tough as it is meant to be played, while also making the game safer. We hope you learn and enjoy as you watch the following film. Tracking is closing the distance with the ball carrier while maintaining our leverage. As we approach making contact, we key the near hip of the ball carrier. Number 31 tracks the near hip as he closes the distance with the wide receiver. Number 50 makes an inside out leverage tackle, closing in on the near hip of the running back. The defensive end, number 91, adjusts his approach as the running back changes his path. This allows 91 to maintain his leverage. The tracking drill we use is called run and gather. Number 29 will run and gather while closing the distance on the ball carrier. Number 41 closes on the ball carrier until he can contact him. Notice how he maintains a tackling posture with a shoulder square. Here's a good look at number 79, a D lineman, tracking number 7. Number 29 is tracking the near hip using the boundary as leverage as he makes a sideline tackle. We are a shoulder tackling team. Our hawk tackle is a shoulder leverage tackle contacting the ball carrier on the thighs. Our coaching points are eyes through the thighs, wrap and squeeze, drive for five when necessary. The ball carrier generally goes down immediately with hawk tackles. As number 29 tackles the running back, he contacts the ball carrier on the thighs with his right shoulder. Number 25 maintains his leverage on the ball carrier and makes a right shoulder tackle hitting him through the thighs. Number 41 makes another hawk tackle with his left shoulder. Notice number 31 driving his feet on contact, drive for five. This is when the ball carrier does not go down immediately. In the core of the defense, number 50 makes a textbook hawk tackle on a downhill runner. Number 31 maintains his leverage and contacts with his right shoulder at the thighs and squeezes the ball carrier's thighs into his chest. Hawk roll tackles are shoulder leverage tackles at the thighs that finish with the ball carrier being wrapped up at the thighs and rolled to the ground. It's similar to a hawk tackle but with the addition of a roll at the finish of the tackle. Our coaching points are eyes through the thighs, wrap and squeeze, roll. Number 31 attacks the receiver at the thighs and rolls the ball carrier to the ground. Number 92, that nose tackle will come off the block and hawk roll tackle the running back. In space, number 29 will contact the wide receiver with his right shoulder and wrap and roll at the thighs. Coming from the middle, number 31 will make a right shoulder hawk roll tackle. 
Profile tackles are shoulder leverage tackles that make contact with the near breastplate of the ball carrier, which we call the near pec. These are tackles that are made generally above the waist. Our coaching points are attack the near pec, wrap, and drive for five. Number 29 makes a left shoulder hit through the near pec of the ball carrier and begins to drive for five hard steps. Number 31 makes a left shoulder profile tackle. Number 91, the near defensive end, tracks the ball carrier and makes a right shoulder profile tackle. Drive for five. When a ball carrier does not go down immediately, drive for five is the trigger term that encourages our players to drive for five hard steps upon contact with the ball carrier. This is a good example of drive for five hard steps. Number 54 makes a right shoulder hawk tackle and drives for five hard steps. Oftentimes the hawk tackle takes the ball carrier to the ground immediately before the defender can get that done. But the emphasis is on driving your feet through the tackle. Hawk tackles. Eyes through the thighs, wrap and squeeze, drive for five when necessary. Working our hot tackling from our knees, okay? The ball carrier is gonna move left or to his right, okay? And then if you step to the left, I'm gonna squeeze and just bring the guy down. Set, go. Set, hit. Nice. Set, go. Did you get your eyes up? This is a great look at a leverage hawk tackle and the wrap and squeeze element by number 31. Okay, right now we're working the hawk tackle and what we're doing is from a standing position and we're working a leverage working to angle Ball carrier is going to run to this point. Uh, tackle is going to run to this point. This will be, as he's tracking the near hip, the inside hip of the ball carrier, this will be a right shoulder hit for the tackler. Same thing, we're tackling ice with ice, wrap, and we're driving for five, taking them to the ground. Notice we're not using any helmets, and we're still being able to bring these guys down in this practice. All right, here we go. Set, go. Yep, same side. Set, go. Eyes to thighs, wrap, drive for five. Set, go. Eyes to thighs, wrap, drive for five. This is an example of a cross face hawk tackle when the ball carrier attempts to cross 25's leverage. This is another cross-face hawk tackle by number 50 as he strikes with his right shoulder. Notice that even with a cross-face tackle, the head remains out of the play. Set, go. Number 20 tracks the near hip and makes a left shoulder hawk tackle. Say that hip. Nice. Hawk roll tackles. Our coaching points are eyes through the thighs, wrap and squeeze, roll. Number 79 makes a right shoulder hawk roll tackle.
Number 29 ends up in a left shoulder hawk roll tackle position. The hawk roll tackle is similar to the hawk tackle in the sense of we're going eyes to the thighs, contacting with our shoulders, wrapping. This time we're rolling to the side of our leverage. Oftentimes it happens with cloud force or sky force or back of force type outside in leverage hits. We're contacting with our shoulders, eyes to the thighs. We're going to wrap and then roll to our leverage. So we're already working that former leverage point. And what we're doing here is I want my near foot up, splitting his crotch. Okay, I'm going to get, get low. Get my eyes to his thighs, the ball carrier's thighs. I'm gonna squeeze, and I'm gonna drop, and I'm gonna roll. Set, hit. Roll, excellent, excellent. There we go. Set, hit. Eyes to the thighs, wrap and roll. Set, hit. Nice job. Set, hit. Nice. Set, hit. Wrap and roll. Excellent, excellent. Coming from his inside out leverage position, number 29 makes a left shoulder hawk roll tackle. This is a good example of number 29 tracking and maintaining proper leverage as he makes a left shoulder hawk roll tackle. Number 31 tracks and makes a right shoulder hawk roll tackle. All right, here we go, on set, go. Set, go! Eye to the thighs, wrap, and roll. Nice. Set, go! Nice, nice shot, that's good, that's good. Set, go! Set, go! Number 31 tracks and makes a right shoulder hawk roll tackle. We practice full speed hawk roll tackles with bags simulating the outside thigh of the ball carrier. Number 41 carries his momentum to roll the ball carrier over him. Set, go! Nice. Set, hit! Nice. Nice shot. Set, hit! Nice shot. Nice shot. Profile tackles are shoulder tackles contacting through the near peck of the ball carrier above the waist. Our coaching points are strike through the near peck, wrap, drive for five. Number 31 does a nice job of striking the near peck and driving his feet through the tackle. Strike through the near peck, wrap, drive for five. Set, go! Nice!
Set, go! Nice. Set, go! Set, go! Notice here how number 29 is driving for 5. Number 31 shows how we emphasize striking with your shoulder and wrapping before driving for 5. Number 72 strikes through the near peck in this clip. This drill is designed to work on how you strain through a profile tackle. We emphasize the strain it takes to drive for five hard steps. The chest shield simulates the near peck. Bag holders should provide some resistance before being driven onto the crash pad. As we have mentioned, we are a leveraged tackling team. Compression tackles are simultaneous tackles that take place with two or more defenders, with each tackler owning their leverage on the ball carrier and striking with the proper shoulders. Compression tackles can occur with players from a combination of position groups. Once we've learned our fundamental tackling techniques, we apply those techniques in combination with other players and by situations. Here's a compression tackle with linebackers and DBs. Look how they use their leverage to make solid tackles. Here's an example of two defensive linemen driving for five, finishing the ball carrier. Both tacklers close and track the respective near hip of the ball carrier. Both will get the near foot up as they close into within striking range. Number 37 and number 34, front side defenders must turn back the ball carrier and the back side defender must close. Here's an example of defensive back and a defensive lineman. Here's an example of a cornerback and a linebacker. You can see a hawk tackle down low and a profile tackle up high. And here's an example of a linebacker and a defensive lineman. The strike zone applies to tackling defenseless opponents. The zone is classified as below the neck and above the knees, just like a baseball strike zone. We make contact using our shoulders at all times, especially in the strike zone. The helmet of both the tackler and the ball carrier are out of the game. Number 50 does a phenomenal job of adjusting his aiming point as the receiver lowers his body and the strike zone consequently drops. Although this play was flagged in the game, it was later ruled a legal hit because number 31 contacted the receiver inside the strike zone. Here are several more examples of defenders hitting the ball carrier or receiver inside the strike zone. We never wanted to take a step backwards in terms of the physical side of the game. We love the aggressive side. We want to be able to maintain the toughness, uh, the physicality that, that has always been inherent to the game of football. And hopefully you can see here that we're able to do that uh, and, and play safe and keep the head out of the, out of the game. 
Our guys take great pride in, in their ability to play physical football and do it the right way. We think we can get this done and we think you can too. We drill this by giving our tacklers a moving strike zone, simulated by the chest shield, which encourages the tackler to mindfully locate the strike zone. Thank you for joining us as we introduced you to our tackling system. We hope you learned the value of shoulder tackling and the importance of taking the head out of the game. We would love to hear your feedback as we continue this dialogue and help make this great sport even better for the generations to come.